coach welcome back to the channel if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content we put out pretty much at this point we're putting out content every 24 hours so make sure you subscribe to stay up to date and don't stay stuck with your business now if you want to learn more about our sports accelerator program right this is a business coaching program that we have for coaches in all sports that will help to start grow and scale your business to the next level right book a free 15 to 20 minute call with me you can do that by visiting the uh, calendly link in the description you can book a free 15 to 20 minute call and I'll be able to answer any questions that you have with regards to our Sports Accelerator program. At this point, we've got coaches in all sports uh, part of the program. Yeah, and we've got coaches that have reached that six-figure f- uh, per year figure within that program, right? So don't stay stuck with your business. There is a program here to help you. Uh, so all you need to do is just visit the Canonly link, book that free 15 to 20 minute call. We can jump on Zoom. I can answer some questions and we can take it from there. So today I want to talk about terms and conditions, right? And one of the reasons why coaches and trainers in this industry don't have terms and conditions with their their clients. So something we teach in our program when coaches join the program and they're looking to make tweaks within the business is we help them with the, the the part where they have to add contracts into their training program. So essentially what we do is we help coaches to restructure what they're currently doing so that it's more uh, solid and it's more and they can have more success with the clients that they're working with and they can also attract more committed clients. But something we're seeing and something I'm personally seeing being in this industry for a while is coaches don't have contracts with their their current clients okay and when you don't have contracts you don't have any terms and conditions and the problem i'm seeing is that with with, when there's no contracts right there's no expectations uh, for the client right the client doesn't know what your standards are right they don't know what your expectations are Okay, all they simply know is that they have to show up to training, you know, do do the training session, pay you, come home, and pretty much they can show up and 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 it's it's run on a very uh, unprofessional uh, environment. Okay, now when you've got clients on contracts and essentially you've got them on long term agreements, okay, those those contracts will state your terms and conditions, right? When clients are supposed to pay you, what are the expectations during the training session, what day and time the training is going to be. Okay, so when you have those contracts in place, then not only will your clients be more committed, but they'll also turn into good clients, right? Because they will pay you on time because they've signed the contract they will show up to all your training sessions because they've agreed to, right? And essentially they will stay in your program because they have signed the contract that they are, they will stay in your program for three, six, nine or 12 months. Okay, once they sign that, again, contracts can be broken, but for the most part, right, signing something is, a, is an intent that you are going to fulfill what you've signed, okay? And one of the reasons why I think coaches are scared to to implement these contracts and these terms and conditions with with clients is because they they're scared that if they do so, right, clients will leave them. Okay. Now, I've had I've got my own coaching business. I've had it now since two thousand and eighteen. Right. I do. I mainly do group training now but i used to do one-on-ones and then i transitioned it to groups but every single client that has worked with me okay they all have signed the contract when they join okay so they all come for an evaluation session and then based on that evaluation or trial session okay i will either offer them a spot 
within the program if I feel that they're a good fit. Or I have to have that tough conversation with them and say to them that their, their, their child isn't ready to, to join our program just yet. Okay, and what I do at the moment is I've got referral, um, I've got referral program with other trainers in my area that if I refer them a, a client or a potential client and that client joins, then essentially I get a little commission, very small, but a little commission as a, um, a referral to, to them. Okay, because I know that not all parents are going to be a good fit. And to be honest with you, having done this since 2018, I don't want to work with every single parent in my local area. Yes, that's extra money, extra revenue. But ultimately, when I, what I've noticed, especially with my business, is that when I've got like-minded kids and like-minded parents in, in one environment, okay, the program gets better, right? Your clients stay longer. And also, right, they recommend like-minded parents to you. Okay, so ultimately, it, it becomes a really nice environment to, to come and train, to come and be with. And as a business owner, I'm not driving to my, to my session with the headache that I have to work with a specific client that day, okay? At this point, I pretty much enjoy all the clients I'm working with uh, in my training business, but it took a while to get there, right? I had to go through many bad clients in order to get to, to really good ones, but I had to implement terms and conditions and contracts because essentially, if a client doesn't want to sign the contract, which I've had in the past, that's no problem at all, okay? They don't have to. They don't have to join my program. They don't have to invest their money into me. They can go somewhere else. But I can guarantee you, if they go somewhere else, they're not going to stay for long, okay? They'll probably be there a month, maybe a month and a half, two months, and then they'll go and find something somewhere else, right? Clients that are not committed don't tend to stick around. Clients that are committed, that want to be there, right? They will happily sign your contract. They will happily pay you on time. They will happily, you know, do what you say because they believe in you. They trust in your program. And, you know, essentially they see the value you're adding to their child. Okay. But all of those things can't happen unless you get clients on contracts and set up terms and conditions with them right so when you create these contracts which is something that if you're if you're a member of our sports accelerator program right we have templates in our program that you can essentially print off and edit or edit them okay to your business you can print them off and use them straight away Okay, this is something Ben, Ben has been working on, all right, since, since he started the program, okay, and this is something, obviously, me working behind the scenes, I've, I've had my input in, into this as well, right, but essentially, what you want to do to get more committed clients, to have good, have high standards within your business, you need to have terms and conditions, you need to get clients on contracts and those contracts need to be long term so that you can get results with the players you're working with. Right? I had a conversation the other day with a parent here in the UK and essentially that parent asked me, he goes, he, he, he's, he's seen some of my YouTube videos here that I make for, for Make Money Coaching Sports. And he asked me a question, he goes, Leo, would you recommend one-on-one -on -one training? Okay. Now, reason why I, he asked me that was because he obviously knows that I work with a lot of trainers in, in the one-on-one -on -one, um, space. But essentially, the reason why he was asking uh, my opinion or my viewpoint was because he knows that one-on-one -on -one training is is a big investment for parents, right? Wherever you are in the world, whether you're in the UK, whether you're in the US, whether you're in Canada, whether you're in Australia, right? New Zealand, wherever you are and you're doing one-on-one -on -one training, okay? Normally, one-on-one -on -one training is a lot more expensive than if you were to join a group environment. So 
he asked me, he said to me, Leo, is one-on-one training okay, good for my child? And my response to it was, it, it really depends on the value that that trainer is adding to your child. Okay, And also, it really depends on whether your child needs it or doesn't. Okay, Because what I see with a lot of trainers is that they just want to make a quick buck. Right, they just want to make some quick money and they will happily take on any kid whose parent is willing to throw $50 at them to train their, their child, right? Uh, but the, at the end of the day, okay, if you don't have a process, if you don't have a system, that child might come one session and then that's it, okay? Because essentially not, not all players, not all kids need one-on-one training, okay? Some work better in a one-on-one environment but others work better in groups. And also something I've seen with parents is that a lot of parents want their child to do one-on-one training, but the truth is that child doesn't need it. Okay, they don't need it because maybe number one, they they don't enjoy that one-on-one environment. Okay, because a lot of kids don't enjoy it. A lot of kids rather be, you know, around other kids. So groups is a lot better. And also depends on the goals and aspirations of, of that, that, that player, right? Some players don't understand why they're doing one-on-one training when, you know, the reality is they know that they're never going to become a professional soccer player, okay? So they're like, why am I doing this, okay? So it really depends, and that's why we've got to have a really strict process when we bring on any client into our our ecosystem and make sure that they are a right fit but you only have, you you can only determine they are a right fit if you have a good system that filters them out if they're not and also you make them sign contracts where they have to think twice before joining your program okay so a contract is a is a way pretty much to scare any client that's not committed to staying in your program Okay, because the worst thing you want to do is you want to bring on a client for three months and the parent signs, they pay you, and essentially that kid is, you know, is a nightmare to work with. Okay, and you don't enjoy training them, you don't enjoy showing up, and it might get to the point where you get one month into, into the contract and you have to turn around and say to the parent, listen, I don't think your child is, is the right fit, and then... Depending on what your terms and conditions are, you know, you might have to refund them and your business loses out, not just not just money, but you lose out on time as well. Okay, so if you need more help with this, if you need more help setting up uh, contracts, terms and conditions within your business, or you want to learn a little bit more about our Sports Accelerator program, okay, Ben and myself have been running this program for a while now. Okay, we've got coaches in there from all around the world from basketball, from baseball, from soccer, okay, all the, all the skills, all the not, all the education that you're going to learn in that program is transferable to all skills, okay, I know I've got coaches in other sports that watch um, my YouTube videos, so, you know, jump on, take, take advantage of that free 15 to 20 minute call with me, I can answer any questions you may have, and we can, we can take it from there, okay, Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.